What's up guys, The Snowman here, and today I wanted to make this video because there are few things in life that get me as excited as a good old-fashioned World Cup draw, whether it's men or women's, and we just had one this weekend. The 2019 Women's World Cup draw took place on Saturday, and we have our field of 24. We know uh, they've been divided into six groups of four teams each, and I just wanted to give some rapid reaction to these groups and how it shakes up uh, some of the storylines some of the power rankings here i'm going to have a full kind of preview as we get closer to the world cup to france 2019 at this point it's about six months away though i am so excited can't wait for the women's world cup and uh so right now here you see the draw i just wanted to go through all six of these groups talk a little bit about who's going to be the favorite in each group some of the storylines and uh, and how things are going to shake out but so much anticipation right now. I'm so happy we finally have everything figured out. This was the final step in the pre-World Cup process. Now we know all the scheduling, all the fixtures, everything is uh, is figured out here. So uh, let's dive into these groups. And in Group A, we have the host nation, France. And France will certainly be one of the favorites. They are loaded at every level. Starts in the back with their captain, their towering center back, Wendy Renard. The defense will be uh, will be stout for sure. They also have a world class midfielder in the uh, the center of the pitch. That's Amandine Henri, who plays for the Portland Thorns. She just oozes class, oozes technique. She's great, and they've got a, a clinical striker in Eugenie Le Sommer up top, a true number nine. Really, France is loaded at all levels. They're not going to have any weakness to their team, and the fact that they have home field advantage for this tournament. France will be one of the favorites, but they could have some trouble in this group because really I, I think this draw was pretty even. There's not really a one particular group of death per se, but if I had to pick a group that was just slightly more loaded than the others, I'd probably say it's this first group. Nigeria and South Korea are both no pushovers. Nigeria, the African champs, yet again, they've made all eight World Cup tournaments. And then you have Norway sitting here, and Norway is in a very interesting position because their best player, 23-year-old Ada Hegeberg, who just won the first ever Women's Ballon d'Or for the best player on the planet, she may not be with the team next summer for this World Cup. She hasn't played internationally for Norway since the summer of 2017. Basically, I don't want to get into it too much, but it's a whole lot of politics. Hagerberg feels like the Norwegian Federation uh, isn't treating their players fairly, and she's got a lot of good points in that, but they're going to do a whole lot of courting for Hagerberg throughout the next few months. Everyone in Norway, it's going to be like LeBron James or Kevin Durant in free agency, how everyone is just very complimentative, you know, telling them whatever they want to hear, trying to court them their way. Everyone in Norway is going to be trying to get Hagerberg on board to make a run at the World Cup. Whether she plays or not will go, uh, will go a long way in saying who wins this Group A. But either way, I mean, Norway is still just as loaded as most of the other European powers. France, Germany, England. they still got a lot of talent. I really hope we get to see Hagerberg at this World Cup. And that's going to make it just so much more fun. But, uh, but this group is pretty good. It's definitely France's to lose. But uh, Group A is, is going to provide some good drama for sure at this World Cup. Moving to Group B now, it'll probably be a little bit more straightforward in terms of who wins the group. Uh, obviously, I've got Germany pegged as the winners of Group B here. Even with their new coach, Martina Vosteklenburg, even with some of the old guard having moved out. No more Celia Sasic, the 2015 World Cup Golden Boot winner. No more Nadine Angerer in net. They still have players like Jennifer Marshawn, who are world class. They still have that German efficiency. So I think Germany won't have too many problems winning at this Group B. But in terms of the other teams, China and Spain are going to make a very fun race for the runner-up position in this group. Spain was one of the weaker teams in Pot 2. And likewise, China was one of the stronger teams in Pot 3. China, you know, they're traditionally a strong team in women's football. Made the, uh, the final back in 1999. That was the Brandy Chastain penalty game. Um, they also made it to the quarterfinals, though, recently in 2015, losing to the USA again. They'll be a tough out. Spain, on the other hand, you know, they were perfect in qualifying. Eight games, eight wins, 25 goals scored, only two conceded. But, uh, but they're not nearly, they don't have nearly as good of a reputation as the, the men's Spain team or some of the other European powers in women's football. 
I think that Spain-China matchup is going to be really fun. You also have South Africa, who, uh, you know, they'll try Janine Van Vyck, a very good player in the back line. She's the highest-capped African player of all time. So, uh, so they'll try to uh, throw a monkey wrench into this equation, but I've got Germany 1 and then China-Spain neck and neck. It's going to be a very interesting uh, finish to see who gets this runner-up position. Now, Group C, for the first time, I feel pretty comfortable in predicting a clear pecking order in terms of this team will be one, this will be two, three, and four. Um, at the top, you've got Australia. Some people will say, Snowman, how can you put Australia and Brazil not on the same plane? But for me, Australia is, is world class. If you're, if you're ranking, I haven't looked at the odds to win this World Cup yet. I don't even know if they're out yet. I'll probably look at that a lot closer to the tournament, still six months away. But my top five just right now, I'd probably say Germany's got the fifth best odds to win this competition. I'd put the host France at number four, and I'd put Australia at number three. I mean, they're really good. They're led by a household name in women's soccer, Sam Kerr, the 2017 NWSL MVP. That's the domestic league here in the States, the domestic soccer league, kind of like the MLS, but way more high quality. So she was the MVP two seasons ago. She also led the NWSL in goals again this year, though. Uh, she's a top five player in the world. Australia is the last team, by the way, to beat the United States. That was back in the summer of 2017. They also drew the Stars and Stripes this year, a 1-1 draw. Both of those games were in America too. So Australia, really, really good. Then you have Brazil, just, just a little bit behind them. It's not by much, but uh, obviously Brazil, they still have Marta, who is now 32 years of age. She'll be 33 for the World Cup. And Marta, the FIFA Player of the Year, a record six times. And she is the Women's World Cup all-time leading goal scorer with 15 goals. So that, that's the clear one-two for me. Italy, you know, they won a good qualifying group with Belgium. I'm not going to shortchange them. They have a good player in Barbara Bonense, uh, who's a mercurial player, a standout dribbler on the flank. And then uh, Jamaica, they're going to have some trouble. I'm just, I, I hate to be a little pessimistic for the reggae girls, but it is their first World Cup. They did win a dramatic penalty shootout win over Panama to book their qualification. But uh, if I had to predict their, their fate this World Cup, I'd probably say three games, three losses, and a quick out. But I'm just telling you right now, Australia, don't sleep on them. They're a top three team contender, a bona fide contender to win this competition coming out of Group C. In Group D, I'm not as confident as to who will come out on top, but I think on paper right now, England, probably the favorite, just a little bit over Japan. Japan, I'm a little bit leery right now on on uh, putting all the chips in their favor because the champs in 2011 made the final again in 2015, got slaughtered by Carly Lloyd in that final, by the way. But, uh, but not Japan, still an excellent side, but it's going to be really tough for them to make three consecutive World Cup finals. A deep run at this World Cup would just be incredible because like Germany, they're missing a lot of their old guard now too. No more Aya Miyama, no more Hamari Sawa. They still have players like Iwabuchi who are uh, pretty inventive in the midfield. They're going to have a great shape, great tactics, Japan. But I think England is uh, the favorite in this group. They made the semifinals in the 2015 World Cup. They also made the semifinals of the 2017 Euros. They've got ex-Manchester United coach Phil Neville at the helm. And um, yeah, they're good coaching. They got maybe the best fullback in the world in Lucy Bronze. Um, she's an ex-Tar Hill. She had a wonder goal at the last World Cup. And uh, yeah, Jody Taylor is, is a, a clinical finisher at the top. She plays in Seattle. Fran Kirby, a creative midfield player. So England and Japan, they're going to have a really fun tussle. And then an added storyline, we, we really have great storylines with the way this draw unfolded. We get a nice Great Britain-England-Scotland matchup. The first game, it's on like match day three or four or whatever. England v. Scotland. It'll be the first World Cup for Scotland player Kim Little, now 28, or 28 years of age. Her first World Cup, she was the NWSL MVP in 2014. Um, so it's going to be a fun World Cup debut for them. There may be, I kind of see Scotland as more of a one woman band with Little leading the charge, but England v. Scotland, that's gonna be uh, really fun. And then Argentina, you know, they were fourth in South American qualifying. Um, you know, Benini, Estefania Benini, she's, she's a good number 10, can score outside of the box, a powerful, a powerful right foot on her, but uh, 
you know, Argentina. I've got them below. But this this is a fun group. Group D is probably one of the top two groups just in terms of, of storylines, in terms of matchups you want to see. England, Japan, Scotland. That's going to be good theater. All right, the scouting report for Group E reads like this. You've got two uh, superpowers, two world superpowers right now in Canada and the Netherlands, and two teams that'll just be uh, trying to to probably fight for third place. If you don't know how it works, by the way, the six groups of four teams, uh, the top two teams in each of the six groups advance to the knockout stage. And then because it's a 24 team format, four of the top six third place teams will advance as well. So just because you don't finish in the top two doesn't mean you're out of it. Uh, that's gonna provide a lot of hope for teams like Cameroon, teams like New Zealand. But uh, in this group, Group E, it's all about Canada and the Netherlands. Canada, they cruise through North American CONCACAF qualifying. 12-0 um, win over Cuba, 7-0 over Panama. And they're led by the living legend, Christine Sinclair, who is the, uh, right now she's a striker for the Portland Thorns. And she has 177 career international goals. Second most all time. She needs just eight more to pass the great Abby Wambach for most international goals of all time, men or women. Christine Sinclair uh, is just a stud. But I've got Netherlands as my favorite in this group. They are my ultimate dark horse. I mentioned I had Germany five, France four, Australia three, kind of in my, my way too far out, six months away power rankings for this tournament. I'm going with the Netherlands as number two. They're led by left winger Lika Martins, the 2017 FIFA Women's Player of the Year. She's just an insane dribbler, such a high football IQ. All of the Netherlands, their 4-3-3 formation because they have the personnel to play at their front six is outstanding. It's kind of like the USA. I mean, they have similar personnel to the United States, not as short in the back line, but their front six with Van de Donk and Jackie Grunin, uh, two-way midfielders in the, the center, also with Sharita Spitza, who handles all the set pieces and kind of the leadership in the center defensive mid position. Then on the right wing, they got Shanice Van de Sanden, who is the fastest player in the world, just Usain Bolt speed on the right wing. And then they've got a couple of uh, strikers at the interchange at the number nine position. Vivian Miedema is a, a very sure finisher though. So their front six is a thing of beauty. They're gonna be confident. There's so much upside with this team. They bring back their, their winning coach, Serena Weigman from the 2017 Euro Championships that they won on home soil uh, just a year and a half ago. And uh, my only concern with the Dutch, they have very little depth, but if they stay healthy, if they keep their, their train churning, they're, they're going to be one of the teams to beat in this competition. I am so high on them. I'm probably higher than a lot of other people are with the Netherlands. But uh, Balika Martins is special. And, and uh, I'm just going to tell you right now. Six months away, I'm going to say right now that the USA and the Netherlands will be playing in this 2019 World Cup final. Just a little prediction for you. Uh, yeah. But, but Group E... You know, Cameroon's going to be fun as well. New Zealand, they are, don't sleep on them. They're led by coach Tom Sermani. This will be his fourth World Cup, coached Australia in three other World Cups. Most recently, for the last couple of years, he was coaching Alex Morgan and the Orlando Pride in the NWSL. So Sermani is a, a legendary coach in his own right. But, uh, but yeah, the Dutch and the Canadians, that'll be a fun, a fun, fun fight here in Group E. Finally, we have Group F, and I could talk for hours about the U.S. women's national team, but I'm not going to do that right now. Maybe I'll have a separate video soon just for the USA, but right now I just wanted to let you know that they are in maybe the, the best form that the USA has ever been in. They just finished their highest winning percentage in terms of a calendar year, 20 matches in 2018. They won 18 of those, drew in the other two, zero losses this year. Uh, they're the North American champs from 2018, the She Believe She Believes Cup champs, the Tournament of Nation champs. Their only non-wins were a pair of 1-1 draws to France and Australia. Alex Morgan, maybe you've heard of her. She's kind of the, the face of our team. She is in just on fire, scintillating goal scoring form right now. 25 goals in her last 26 USA appearances. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to get into the USA too much. We know about them. We know how deadly they're going to be. Their front three is just an embarrassment of riches. Rapino on the left, Morgan in the middle, Tobin Heath on the right. Mallory Pugh is, uh, is just amazing, and she can't even get consistent minutes right now because Heath and Rapino and Morgan are playing so out of this world. And that's not even mentioning maybe the two best players on this team in the midfield, Lindsey Horan and uh, Julie Ertz. 
So USA is, is definitely going to be the team to beat again in 2019. This is a good group for them, though. Um, somehow we got drawn with Sweden again for the fifth consecutive World Cup. That's right, the fifth, fifth consecutive World Cup. U.S. women, Swedish women in the same World Cup group. Um, and they've been a thorn in the USA side, though. The last three competitive times Sweden and the USA have played, 2011 World Cup, Sweden wins 2-1. to one. Then the, uh, the 2015 World Cup group stage, a 0-0 draw. And then, of course, you might remember at the 2016 Olympics, that was the 1-1 draw that Sweden won in penalties. Uh, after that game, Hope Solo called the Swedes cowards. And that was kind of the, the final straw for a culmination of ugly incidents that Solo was involved with. She hasn't been with the team ever since. But uh, yeah, Sweden, they don't have ex-USA head coach Pia Sundhaga at the helm anymore. They're still going to provide some problems, though. Uh, they've got a lot of good veteran leaders. Caroline Sager, uh, Neela Fisher, Lisa Dahlqvist. It's going to be fun. So they play each other last. Thankfully for both of them, they'll probably have beaten up on Thailand and Chile before then. So it won't be too meaningful of a game. I don't really see Chile or Thailand providing much of a fight. That, that first USA-Thailand match is going to be maybe a little bit ugly, um, unfortunately, for Thailand. But they both have good goalies. Chile, their best player, their captain, Christiane Endler, is a six-foot uh, goalie from PSG. So she's, she's pretty good. And then Thailand, uh, they'll be frisky. But uh, I don't know if they can keep up with the superpowers like Sweden and like the U.S. women's national team. So yeah, that's just kind of my initial thoughts here with the 2019 Women's World Cup draw. I'm going to have loads more preview content in the next six months leading up to France 2019, but I just wanted to get some rapid reaction out there. But uh, yeah, I'm just so excited. I love women's soccer with uh, with all my heart, and I'm, I'm really excited. So Thank you so much, though, for watching this video. If you enjoy it, please uh, give me a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. And I'll be back very soon here on, uh, on the Snowman Sports Media. So uh, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, full speed ahead to France 2019.